Now, I'll be completely honest with you, when it comes to organisation, I'm not the most organised. However, when it comes to digital organisation, rather than physical organisation, that is something I'm much stronger with. Except, not when it comes to emails. However, one of the things that really helped me to become more organised digitally is online distance learning, especially through the use of Google Classroom. Most of you out there will know that I went through 15 weeks of online distance learning using Google Classroom and as part of that process I needed to become much more organised using it. So as a result I've learned lots of different tips and tricks that I hope to share with you if you happen to be using Google Classroom for distance learning or for any other reason. So there are so many different things that I want to explain in this video. So it's great to just start. Before I do though, please make sure you subscribe to the channel to see more educational edtech videos. So what I wanted to show you is my actual class. Now you'll see that there are certain parts that are blurred out and that's because I need to consider safeguarding and making sure that things are set up correctly. So one of the things you'll notice straight away is that I've got a lot of information and unless you keep on top of things, which is why organization is important, it's easy for the children to become overwhelmed by the sheer quantity of things that are available. Now, you'll see some things straight away. On the side, you'll see my different topics. Now, these are the topics that are studied through the curriculum here in Dubai. So we've got things like Arabic B, Arabic A, we've got some social studies, uh, connected learning, then we've got the normal maths in English. Now, you can choose to set up yours depending on the curriculum wherever you are. However, you can also set them up in weeks, so you can have week one, week two, week three, week four. One of my problems with setting things up through weeks is that it's, again, easy for the children to get lost unless you tell them that it is connected learning or maths or English or something along those lines. Then the children might get a little bit confused with dates. And you can see it's, it's a bit confusing when it comes to weeks. So I tend to stick with subjects. And then when the children have an activity to complete, so let's go to English or maths. Maths, we have week six, children know, right, we're on week six, and we share whatever the learning objective is. Now, there are other specific tips for when you set up your topics, such as having little emojis next to them. Now, this works really well with children who are younger, especially if they're struggling with reading and you've got a longer subject, and they're a bit like, mm, not really sure what that is. So you can have those different emojis to support the children with identifying things easier. Another organizational tip that not everyone knows is available is the simple way to change the order of these. Now, it might be that, like this English section, it's quite full and overwhelming for younger children, so the children might not quite know how to find things. So you want to move things to the top. So to do that, you can just tap and move up and down manually. However, you can also just drag it straight to the top, which makes it available for the children straight away. Here is an example class. I don't want to mess around with my actual Google Classroom, so I'm just going to use this one now. So we're going to create, we're going to go down to topic, and we would type in maths. And from there, we would then try and find the correct emojis to use. So now I've got my emojis, and I can add in and add, subtract, division, multiplication. If you're struggling to find emojis through your computer, because different computers can sometimes be different, one of the easiest things I've found is just to use your mobile phone, download Google Classroom, and then add them in that way. It's much more efficient. We've added that in, and then as that pops up, you can see we've got a bunch of emojis that are on the side, so it makes it a little bit more distinguishable for the children. Another tip sometimes people share is to have a today section. Now, I like and dislike this tip at the same time. If you integrate a today section into your classwork section, then it can be quite confusing for children to identify where it is. Is it English? Is it maths? Is it in the today section? What I prefer is to utilize the stream. So I disable children from writing nowadays just because it, it saves a bit of hassle and stress with children putting random things. That's another organizational tip. However, here then, as you can already see down in the corner, I've added my morning message, and that's one of my virtual Bitmoji classrooms. Now, what I do with that is just have all my little optional extras. So it might be morning activities, additional games that the children might want to play, targets. There's so many different things that you can share through here. However, I like to just keep this one nice and organized and then save the classwork for, you guessed it, classwork. So this is the stream for those optional extras, and that's how I utilize it. 
Another tip that I want to share with you is the people section. Now, make sure that you invite people into your classroom. It's going to make it much more efficient for people to collaborate together. If you collaborate, you're more likely to organize it as well. If we go through to the classwork section, then you've got the create and reuse post. I've made another video about the top tips for Google Classrooms, and the reuse tip is shared within that, and just talking about how we can reuse posts and share them multiple times. Again, really good for organization. When you schedule those posts, then it makes it a little bit easier and saves you a little bit of time, improving your well-being, fingers crossed. So another thing that you might be thinking is, well, there's quite a lot here. What are you going to do about it? Well, to be honest, I was hoping that during this video I could clean this up a little bit. So if I delete that, some people think that if you delete, it will disappear forever. However, it goes somewhere else, and that's really important for you to understand. So you can actively just go through and delete these, and I'm going to show you where these end up in a second, so stay tuned for that, and I'm going to show you some tips from there too. So let's clear this one up. So now I've spent a little bit of time sort of organizing my Google Classroom, and you can see that it's pretty bare. Now you're probably wondering where those things have gone to. It goes to a class drive file. Now if we tap onto that, it actually takes you through to my folder. So here you can see lots of different folders available. Now you're probably thinking, well, I'm a little bit confused by this because you've got lots of different weeks available now and not really sure what's going on. Now, if I were to tap onto one of these, then it would actually take me through to the children's work, which is why I'm not going to do that. So all the children's work is still saved here. One of the things I want to do is clear this up. Now, rather than drag and drop each one in, so if this is week six, Wednesday, adding and subtracting, now you can start to see why we add in the weeks, and we add in what the subject's about. So you can see English here. If I were to drag that and find the maths folder down here, every single time that I do that, I've got to press this additional button, which takes time. Rather than do that, you can hold down Command, Command, click, and that might be different on Windows. Command, click, I'm just going to go through, Command, click, Command, click, and I can do that with every single one. Let's just take the spans off for now. And let's just keep going through. Regular verbs. You just need to find things first, and then you can just drag everything, then you can see we've got four folders into that one there. Now, one of the things I should have said is that you do need to create these different subject folders within the classroom folder, and that's really simple. You just create a folder there too. And from there, I'm just gonna move from moral education. So you can see I've created folders and then dragged and dropped all the children's work into the relevant folders. Now, to keep this even more organized, you can then add that layer of extra organization by splitting it into individual weeks. Weeks one and two were not English based per se, so they don't have anything in Google Classrooms, but if I were to click onto week four, for example, then you can see all those different activities, and then if I were to click through that, then you would then be able to see all of the children's uh, work that I'm not going to show you for obvious reasons. In addition to that, you can also add specific folders. Now, this is a TOEFL writing folder, and what I did with this is link the English folder as a specific QR code that I stick in the English books at school. Then, if someone comes along and scans that QR code, not only can they see the work that's in Google Classroom, they can also see the extra things that they've been doing. For example, it might be a bit of drama, and rather than take photos, print them off, and stick them into books, and that takes a long time. Now, on my iPad, I just simply upload them to the Google Drive, this folder specifically, and they're there. Really simple, and then on the learning objective, then I can say, see QR code, and people can find that very straightforward and easily. And that marks the end of the video. Hopefully you've learned something new and you're able to use Google Classroom a little bit more efficiently, especially when it comes to organization. If you want to see more Google Classroom or EdTech videos, please check out my channel and feel free to subscribe to see future content. If you click the notification bell, you'll be alerted when I post future videos. If you did find the video useful, feel free to like it. That's always appreciated too, guys. Hopefully I will see you in the next one, but until the next time, I'm out.